Hey guys, it's Adrian over BHA here bringing you another video. So I did this video back in February on Home Panel um, and uh, how it integrated with Home Assistant and it works pretty awesome. But back here in September, they came out with uh, basically their 2.0 version of Home Panel. Had some new features and uh, some different things that they added to it. So I thought it would be a great idea to uh, just run through the latest and greatest uh, at least uh, of things that I've found in uh, home panel in this new version. And I think as of uh, late, it's like uh, they're already at like 2.42 maybe. I mean, they, they've actually uh, updated it quite a bit, uh, even since uh, mid-September, I think, when they uh, moved to uh, 2.0. So if you guys are looking for um, something to run in a touch panel, uh, for your house maybe to do uh, some controls and stuff with uh, touch panels around the house, uh, home panel is definitely worth checking out. Here we go. Yeah, home panel is uh, pretty easy to set up. Um, as uh, you probably saw in my previous video back in February, uh, the actual setup for this is not going to be much different. But we'll go ahead and run through it again. And I'll have a link to the original video uh, in the description as well as links to their GitHub page and uh, all their uh, various documents that they have online for home panel. So let's do a quick run through of everything we're gonna cover in this video. So of course, for starters, we're going to install home panel in Docker and I'll be using uh, Docker Compose, of course. Once we do that, we're gonna just kind of go through the basic configuration of home panel, um, you know, to have it up and running and uh, synced with your uh, home assistant setup. Uh, once we do that, we're going to add some devices in Home Panel just to show you how easy it is to do. And lastly, uh, we'll just kind of see it in action, see how it works, uh, see what kind of response time we're looking at. So uh, let's get started. All right. So again, um, we are going to install Home Panel in Docker uh, using Docker Compose. So in order to do that, we need to uh, edit our Docker Compose YAML file here. We're going to find an open spot down here at the bottom. Let's see. I'm going to call mine Home Dash Panel. And then for the container name, I'm just going to say Home Dash Panel. For that as well we'll set the restart to always now for the image uh, it is uh, timo001 so that's a uh, t-i-m-m-o-001 slash home dash panel and i'll have all this in the description below so you can just copy and paste it uh, for the ports uh, it's just one port that we need to open. By default, it is 8234, so that's what we're going to open here. 8234 colon 8234. And then for the volume, I'm just going to set it up in a Docker volume here this time. So uh, we're going to create one called home underscore panel underscore data. And I'm going to point it to basically slash data. So uh, it'll say home underscore panel underscore data colon slash data. And then just down here in our volume sections at the bottom of my Docker Compose that YAML file here, I'm just going to create another entry for this newly uh, created volume. It will be home underscore panel underscore data. Put a colon at the end. Once we have all that in there, we can go ahead and save it. And to install this, we're going to do a sudo docker dash compose up dash D. Let it download everything and get it set up. And once that's uh, finished, we'll jump over to Portainer just to take a look and make sure everything looks good. There it is listed. We'll click on it. Everything looks correct. It's got the port number there, 8234. Shows my volume for uh, home underscore panel underscore data. So I think we are good to go. Let's move on to that next step. All right, so to access Home Panel for the first time, or for any time for that matter, um, it is going to be the IP address of your Docker host. So 
So for me, it's 10.10.10.28. And then the port number will be uh, colon 8234. So we'll put HTTP colon slash slash 10.10.10.28 colon 8234. Up at the top, you'll get your login screen. If you never logged in before, then you'll create a new account. If you have, obviously, you just log in with your login. So I'm going to create a new account here and just say sign up. It'll create the account. And here is the default page for home panel. So it's got a little welcome group. Uh, it's got the clock at the top, the date at the top. This is kind of their default uh, configuration. Now, the great thing about home panel is that everything can be done from the web interface here. You don't really have to access any YAML files or do any kind of coding or scripting or anything like that. We can do it all from the uh, web interface. And if you click on the little three bars in the top corner here, as a button for logging into Home Assistant, this is how you will sync Home Panel with Home Assistant. So we'll click on that. It's gonna ask for your URL for your uh, Home Assistant setup. So mine, of course, is just 10.10.10.28 uh, colon 8123. Uh, yours may be different depending on how you have your setup. Plug that in there, go ahead and hit log in. It's gonna send me over to the Home Assistant page to log in with my Home Assistant credentials. I'll do that here, and then boom, it says, uh, I mean, it basically just brings you back to this uh, page here, and you are now synced with the Home Assistant. And as you can see, if you click on the three bars in the top corner now, that no longer mentions the uh, having to log in with Home Assistant. If we click on Configuration, you'll see all of your basic uh, config for this uh, interface here. So you can change the theme from dark to light, uh, you can change your color configuration. So like for the primary, it's currently pink. We're going to just, we'll set it to um, indigo just to make a change here. Set the secondary color to orange. As you can see for the background, it even has a color wheel. So you can pick whatever color you want. I'm going to leave it the same for right now. But you get the idea of all the things that you can do um, with this and as you can see down here it's got a place for the date so you can uh, show the date you can choose not to show the date you can pick which side you want the time and uh, a date locations at the top you can even choose military time or whatever kind of date format you want I'm gonna move the date over to the right uh, that's enough to give you an idea so as you can see here now it's got the new color of indigo at the top instead of pink uh, it's got the date on the right side, the clock on the left side. That's our basic setup of Home Panel. Pretty cool. Let's go ahead and jump over to that next step. All right, so we're going to add some devices in uh, into Home Panel here. We got the default group that they already had set up. It says Welcome Group. So we're just going to modify that. We'll give it. Uh, we'll change the name of that group. I'm just going to call this one uh, Thermostats. And I'm going to change it to make it just a little bit bigger. We'll make it four uh, tiles wide. And then uh, let's see here. Uh, we're going to add a couple of uh, devices here. So let's uh, add one. Click on the edit here. Uh, for the title, I'm just going to call this one thermostat A. I have two thermostats in my house. Uh, so we're going to uh, add uh, the thermostats in here. And I want this to be a uh, two by two. If you don't make your thermostat cards two by two, uh, you will not get all of the controls for the thermostat. Uh, so thermostats, I think, are a new feature that they've added into uh, Home Panel. I think in the past, uh, you didn't have the full controls of a thermostat like you normally do in Home Assistant. Uh, but uh, basically, we uh, make it two by two here. And then for the entity, uh, we'll do it. we can do a search because it is connected to our Home Assistant. So we'll uh, start typing in climate, and it should come up with the list there it is. Select thermostat A, and then we're going to do the same thing for the second card. We'll call this one thermostat B. Again, make sure it's a two by two. And then we're going to search for uh, thermostat B. Now we have two thermostat controls uh, in our thermostats uh, group here. 
And as you can see, it's got the full controls. Down at the bottom, you have uh, whatever other features you have, heat, cool, and then of course you can uh, set your temperature uh, set point uh, on, on the right there. Let's go ahead and create a second group. We're gonna call this one light switches. It doesn't need to be as big because we're gonna make smaller tiles here. Uh, we'll add in my living room lights. Just do a search down here for light dot living room lights. And we'll add a second one here. We'll say kitchen lights. Again, uh, you know, light that kitchen lights. As you can see how easy it is to add uh, devices into home panel. And again, all this is done from the web interface. You don't have to uh, get on the command line or make any changes to any files that way. Pretty awesome. Now that we've got a few devices added, let's uh, jump over to that last step and see it in action. All right, so here we are in my living room. We're just gonna test out the living room lights. Just see how well it works. Uh, my kitchen lights are already on. As you can see the blue there, we'll turn on the living room lights and bam, they immediately come on. It is like super fast, I kid you not. Uh, we'll go ahead and turn it off again just to show you. Bam, got the dimmable lights, so it kind of dims it down, but it works out great. Pretty awesome. Now I added in curtains to this as well. I thought this would be another cool feature because they didn't have cover support in uh, home panel before either. Uh, so it, now with the new version, uh, they've kind of added support for covers. So I thought it'd be cool to uh, add in a uh, tile for my curtains. So we've got those down here. We're gonna hit the open button, which is the up. As you can see, they pretty much almost immediately open. Very awesome. And then we'll go ahead and hit the uh, close button as well. And of course they start closing. So. That's it, guys. I mean, that's pretty much the end of the video. It's a pretty easy setup. As you saw, this video is not long. Um, it, it doesn't take a lot to get this set up, so I thought it worked pretty well. Not a whole lot to it. So if you're looking for something to add into uh, your uh, home automation setup, maybe with some touch panels around the house, then uh, home panel is definitely something you want to check out. Um, like I said, it's very easy to add devices and everything works very well uh, from the web interface, so uh, very easy to configure. Let's do a quick run through of everything we covered in this video. So of course for starters, we installed home panel in Docker. Uh, once we did that, we uh, did our minor configuration changes in home panel just so it would link up with uh, home assistant. Uh, after that, we added some devices into home panel. And then, of course, lastly, I showed you what that looked like in action. That's the end of the video, guys. Again, that's it, guys. I uh, hope you liked the video. If you do, please subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comments below. As always, if there are any videos out there that you would like to see that I don't already have out there, let me know in the comments as well, and I will see if I can't get something put together for you guys. Otherwise, I'll see you guys around. Thanks.